tell you what happened. And I'm going to tell you what it's like now. And all of this is just brushing the top of the iceberg, so to speak. And everything I'm going to say has a long story associated with it. And I'll be glad to tell you more details later. At the age of 12, I became an angry boy. I was covered in rage because of what was going on in my life, because of things that had happened. And I remained angry for years and years. Years. It was my defining characteristic. And out of that anger, of course, I became very rebellious. I um, was kicked out of prep school. I married a lady who was everything my parents did not want. You know, daughter and mom. And I grew up in a society and a culture where you were not allowed to show your anger or your feelings or talk about things like that. So I stuffed it. I put the lid on tight. And it leaked out all over the place and damaged all sorts of people in my life and led to depression. And so in addition to being a very angry man, I have been a very depressed man for most of my Believe the lie that I was unloved, and I have believed the truth that there was something wrong with me. And then, just about a year ago, I went to a conference on the Order of St. Luke, a group called the Order of St. Luke is interested in Christian healing ministry and prayer. And I went with no particular expectation. But four years before that, something had happened to me. I had damaged the rotator cuff in my right shoulder to the point that I spent four years and I could not raise my hand above my shoulder height. There just was nothing there to do it. And the doctor who looked at me when it happened said, we can't fix that. Cannot be repaired surgically. You're going to live with that the rest of your life. So I go to a conference up near Yosemite, and there's a gentleman there named Mike Endicott, who's from Wales. He has a ministry called the Order of Jacob's Well, which I recommend to you. He prayed with me Saturday night, and in the space of less than three minutes, I've got the full range of emotions. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm doing physical therapy, I'm doing exercises, I'm getting stronger again. And so I was interested in this business of healing and prayer and went to a conference, another conference of the Order of St. Luke in Fort Worth in June. Before I went there, I, I had a birthday some prayers for me here, and I mentioned that I had no idea what my purpose in life was, and that was the truth. I'm just going through one day at a time. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just doing it. And at that conference, God spoke to me and told me what he had created me for. And it was a surprise, <laughs> but it fit with my gifts. I've been gifted ever since I was a young boy when I got angry. I've been gifted with intelligence. I was gifted with athletic ability. And that was really all I knew about. But I discovered that I had been given other gifts. And I want to encourage you, whoever's looking at this now, listening to this, to ask God what your gifts are. Because you all have 
gifts to be used for his glory. <laughs> so, at that conference, I was blessed with the opportunity to pray with a couple of people who were suffering from some pain. And as I prayed for them in the style that Mike Hindicott had used with me, God relieved them of their pain completely. The other thing that happened before that was that I got a two by four across the forehead. <laughs> I was divorced a few years ago, and it was like having my heart ripped up. And it left me alone. There was nobody. Except God showed up. I began to get acquainted better. Found a small group of men to began to listen to what I would say and laugh at my bad, terrible jokes and love me. And uh, I began to come into a relationship with him that, that I'd never had before. And there are a lot of details about that. Uh, I'll tell you about another time if you ask me. Now, the passage in 1 Corinthians verse two, uh, chapter 2 verse 9 I believe it is that eye has not heard ear, eye has not seen ear has not heard the mind has not comprehended what God has for you and that is certainly the truth for me I could never have imagined that I would be as I am and Romans 8, 28 says that all things, all things work together for good for those who love God. And I can look back in my life to the age of 12 and before, and I can see how that's all been stitched together to bring me to the place where I am now. And I praise God for that. The other scripture that has come to my mind this talk is the passage in Ephesians where Paul encourages and prays for the church at Ephesus that they would know the height and depth, the width and length of God's love for them. I never thought that he loved me. Never. I mean, nobody else did. Why would he? He loves you because he does. Thank you. Thank you.